Well, g'day there traders and friends, market participants and enthusiasts right around the world. You're here with James on behalf of Pivot Point Trading. As I sit down and bring you this uh, pre-market update for Friday, April 21st, 2017, the spirit of this video is going to be in connection to the US dollar and gold and silver. It's very important for you to understand, first of all, the intermarket relationship which they have on one another and subsequently just where they are on the charts. There's a very high chance and probability that right now, Across all three of these specific charts, we are at either an intermediate or a macro turning point. And what happens truly with the price of uh, the US dollar, whether it continues to appreciate in its macro upward trend or if it chooses to break down below and out of this descending triangle, is going to set the tone for gold and silver uh, for quite some time moving forward. So without further ado, let me just move into the analysis so you can see this for yourself <clears throat> and I can begin explaining this to you. It is quite simple. But uh, most importantly, what I want you to take away from this is the simple fact that we are at a very important pivot point or a turning point, otherwise known as a turning point. And uh, you need to approach this very neutrally again for the US dollar, gold and silver. And if you do that and let price, of course, dictate the direction which you want to uh, trade in, then you are going to make a lot of money uh, following and jumping on board with this next trend, which is either going to continue or reverse for these specific markets. So as we look at the US uh, dollar since December, since its swing high peak over here, you can see that we're in some form of a chart pattern. This is what we call a descending triangle. We've got the same area of support more or less in this green box. The only difference though is that when we consider resistance, it is starting to register consecutive lower highs. Now this isn't consecutive lower highs on a macro time frame. This is what we call a consolidation pattern and otherwise known as a resting type of pattern. When we address or address consolidating patterns or patterns of consolidation, generally they are a resting pattern before we see the continuation of the prevailing trends. So when we ask ourselves, what is the direction of the prevailing trend? If we go out to May 2016, and then we start connecting, of course, the swing lows, which establish the bullish trend, we can obviously and very easily establish that we are in an upward trend. If we, if we start zooming out even further, and let me just change the other uh, time frame uh, for you on this and go out to a weekly chart. You can see also that really since 2014, we began to break above resistance at the time, which was coming in at 85. And again, since uh, early 2015 towards the end of 2016, we have been in this uh, different type of uh, channel consolidation, which again has broken to the upside. This is where we find ourselves at the current juncture. So if we continue and move forward a little further, we are starting to once again toy with not only this upward uh, sloping bullish trend line, but also we're drawing closer to the apex of this triangle. So generally, again, in essence, when we approach consolidating patterns or patterns of consolidation, we, we generally try and keep as neutral as possible. We set up bi-directional uh, entries, but at the same time, we can have a little bit of a bias to the direction of the prevailing trend. So if I had to guess or at least assume or pick a direction, it would be to the upside. And again, I'm expecting the US dollar to hold above this green box, to hold above this bullish trend line if that happens and if we can hold above support which we have been doing since or since at least when we began registering this pattern in uh, early December 2016 uh, we are going to see an upward resolution to price and it should take us on up very quickly to 103.38 but if I go out on the weekly chart once again or even the monthly chart and show you this uh, you can see that we have an upper resistance area which is bringing bringing us in all the way up at 112.82 so this is still about 12 13 percent from these current levels which you, which we are registering uh, for the price at least or the purchasing power of the us dollar against that relative basket of currencies it trades against now what does this mean for gold and silver the reason why i'm bringing you this video right now is because when we zoom on out to the weekly chart for gold you can see on my screen right now if we start connecting some of these highs or at least the high <clears throat> that we registered in 2011 and we start connecting some of these subsequent lower highs registered once in 2012 if we fast forward all the way to 2016 we registered uh, this subsequent intermediate uh, swing high over here this is what we call a dead cat bounce and then again we saw another sell-off towards the end of 2016 it sort of bottomed uh, towards the beginning of 2017 and really 2017 so far for commodities or at least for gold and silver has been quite bullish i think year to date they are up around 12 percent so they are doing a really good job the problem is however is that if you cast your mind back to the price of the us dollar we are sitting at that macro support so just remember the price of the us dollar is in this little descending triangle if i can sort of color coordinate uh, this for you we've done something like this and this is over the space 
of about four to five months and we are drawing closer to the apex right so as we sit at support we have to look well where is gold and silver in conjunction to the price of the US dollar and this is where that intermarket analysis sort of comes full circle as you can see again 2017 this is the weekly chart we've been rallying all right we've only had a couple of weeks where gold and silver has pulled back and we are what you need to sort of understand right now is that we are pushing back up into that macro resistance area so again if I zoom on out for you pay attention to this blue line this is the prevailing bearish trend we are still setting up a series of macro lower highs which is the textbook definition of a bearish trend so if I zoom in onto the molecular level this is still the weekly chart it doesn't really come as a surprise that we're starting to register spinning tops now if I go back into the daily chart it was looking as though we were setting up some form of an intermediate top once again and we were going to see the downward resolution below 113.82 uh, which is what we were looking at at that specific time. We had a second entry once we saw the uh, bullish bounce for gold all the way up at 119.23. We broke above this or broke out of this and we've gone, uh, we've just pushed on up a little bit higher. We've made a, a little bit of a rounding top at this particular point. But again, just to note, we are pushing back up into very strong resistance, which when we align it with the price of the US dollar, if the US dollar does break out, it is going to be a little bit of weight or dead weight moving forward for gold and silver because once again, commodities or at least these two are priced in US dollars. And if the US dollar continues to appreciate, it is going to be relatively, or at least what we call a headwind uh, in terms of price for commodities moving forward. So I am rather sort of skeptical at this particular point on a longer term advancement for gold and silver. We might see a little bit of market volatility like we are seeing around these pivot points over here. This may be some form of a false breakout or a whipsaw on gold. I am not buying this. You can see this dotted line here. When you see a dotted line on my screen, it means that personally I'm not in the trade. So you can see during this uh, period over here, we had the bearish entry at 118.23. We had the bullish uh, breakout entry, which again, I wasn't really too phased on, but because of this simple resistance area up here, which was sort of respecting at this particular point, uh, but again, you need to pay attention to the US dollar. What happens with that, whether we break out or break down is going to set the tone for gold and also silver. So if we start to see a rollover at this particular point, uh, there is a very good chance that this is going to be an intermediate top for gold. And I just want to bring that to your attention. If we go to the oscillators as well, have a look at this picture. Extremely overbought on the daily time frame. When we go out to the weekly time frame, you can see as well as we've oscillated back up into that declining resistance area, we're starting to get an array of, of bearish signals. And the MACD is only just trying to push up into the positive positive territory or at least the signal line uh, which is a very bearish uh, sort of indicator when we can barely be, uh, cross back over that that neutral line on the on the slow line and the signal line itself so these are very important warning signals which are sort of indicating um, weakness in the face of what has been a pretty tremendous uh, bullish bounce and a bullish run we have moved from about 108 all the way up to about 122 123 but it looks as though potentially this is the turning point somewhere in this location. And I want to uh, make sure that you are that you are all well alerted to this simple fact. If I bring up the silver chart as well, if we go out to the weekly chart, you can see this. I mean, I don't have it drawn on my screen uh, as nicely. Silver is a little bit different and we have to play different uh, types of resistance areas. It looks as though we are overcoming some of these resistance areas. I mean, we have certainly overcome some of these. But if we go back out, just disregard that trend line, it is more apparent on gold, which is most important at this particular point. But if we go back out into the same type of chart pattern, if we start associating, associating or at least trying to form chart patterns on this particular uh, chart right here, you can see that we've got what may be an exhaustion gap. We've got an engulfing uh, Moribosa candlestick just here. We saw this sort of parabolic rise over the space of about four trading sessions, which again has provided some form of a short term rounding top. And when we were putting out those alerts uh, one to two weeks ago, we are more or less closing back down at those very same levels. So when we were speaking about and referencing the potential of a long or at least a large uh, double top type of pattern, we were suggesting the neckline break would come in at a lower level at 1590. Personally, I was triggered into a short over here. I got stopped out just on this little bounce over here, but I am still approaching this uh, rather, rather bearishly at this particular point. We've pulled back up into this red box. But again, what's going to set my uh, direction on silver and gold moving forward is well, the outcome of what happens to the US dollar as it finally breaks out of that consolidation pattern. All right, so I hope that makes sense. There's an opportunity to go long, of course, on silver and also gold. Uh, but at the same time, in order for me to personally be able to get behind that trade, I'd be looking for the US dollar to actually break down, which would be very bearish um, for the US dollar as well, which would make a lot of sense. And instead of it being a headwind, it's actually going to be a tailwind, so to speak. So it's going to be sort of aiding, of course, uh, gold and silver moving forward if the price of the US dollar does break bearish out of this current pattern. But you should be focusing on 
the US dollar, it is uh, probably the central sort of play or the protagonist of these three at this particular point. And I mean, I cannot give you really the specific date when this should happen, but if we had to look anywhere between or towards the apex of this triangle, it should have resolved itself by the end of May. So we are looking towards one and a quarter months, so to speak, or one and one third months. Uh, it doesn't have to happen right in the apex. It can happen any time beforehand. And it may even happen on this next uh, wave rotation to the upside if we start to see some buying pressure build. We already are starting to see buying pressure once again form. You can see the candlesticks down here, uh, especially these two past candlesticks on Wednesday and Thursday, which are relatively or quite interesting. We do have a hammer almost at support. It does sort of resemble that of a, a dragonfly doji as well. Even the previous day, just an inside day, white, uh, nice long day candle as well, which is sort of mitigated or at least uh, stopped the flow of the selling which happened on, on Tuesday over here. The most important part, however, is to recognize the simple fact that we are still holding above support and we are still holding above this green box over here. So I hope that's helped you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of uh, the week of trading for, of course, Friday. I'll be back with you over the weekend in that Pivot Point Pro analysis class with a lot more individual analysis on our top 12 individual trades and the top three U.S. markets, uh, also with the Russell 2000 and the Dow Jones Transportational Average. All the best, everyone. It is James signing off on behalf of Pivot Point Trading. Goodbye.